<laughs> okay. Yeah, so I've started this um, project. It's called, uh, I said, it, I called it, I called it um, One Minute Inspiration and uh, with Chris Love. But when I saw the, the details of the conversation, and I didn't want to cut out some of the important part. I was like, why make it one minute when it can be minutes? So I, I just changed okay. it to um, <laughs> Minutes of Inspiration with Chris Love and the, which is myself. And the goal is to um, connect with um, community leaders and representatives to um, just to this moment, everybody's going through a lot of things. So the goal is to connect with community leaders and inspiration to um, build an, a strong network of rapport with community leaders and uh, representatives to build their rapport and in order for us to be more united as a community because uh, unity comes by having these dialogues, these conversations. And that's one of the things, um, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm starting um, this initiative. So I'll be, con I'll be um, asking, basically I'll be asking four questions. Um, they are not three questions, they're not like um, things that I need to like do anything. They're, they're just um, plain questions and you just give the answers that you 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 um, you respond to it in your own in your own way and time. There's no um, it's not it's not strict. There's nothing complicated about it. You, you okay. probably have seen the the snapshot of the one I had with John John a couple of sure. days ago. Um, yeah. So um, that that is that. And um, yeah, so I'll be starting with the first question, which is uh, an introduction of who you are. Um, so the first question is, who are you? Who am I? Well, I'm Andrew Smith. Uh, as you know, I'm the uh, MLA for Elijah Modier. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, elected a member of the legislature since 2016. Oh, wow. I'm uh, used to be Southdale, but they split that up on me. So uh, my writing changed during the last election. So I became the, the MLA for Elijah Modier after that uh, 2019 election. I'm a proud father of uh, son Lincoln, and I know Chris, you've seen much of him on social media. He's, <laughs> he's, he's more popular than I am for sure. Yeah. And my wife, Jamie. So we, uh, you know, we've got three of us in the household and especially right now with COVID, uh, certainly count your blessings as what you have as, uh, you know, family and, and friends. Of course, we can't really see our friends, but uh, the family members are really thankful for that you have them in the house right now. You know, a lot of folks live by themselves, perhaps. It's a little bit tougher, I would think, that uh, mm -hmm. during COVID-19. So we're very, very blessed to uh, have the little guy in our lives. And uh, hopefully uh, it's a Christmas he can remember that's coming up. I, uh, <laughs> he won't have his uh, friends over or anything, but uh, at least he'll uh, be able to. It won't be a year he'll forget. Yeah, right? yeah. It's definitely it's going to be a memorable year for <laughs> Uh, everybody and especially for the younger ones coming up there at least they get to have a little taste of what it what it means to be in a pandemic <laughs> yes exactly exactly yeah. uh, thanks for sharing that and um so the follow-up follow question would be how or when did you start your your um or where when or where did you start your political career well actually uh i used to work for a few members of parliament before I got elected. So this goes back, I think 2009, really when I got into it. I was living in Nova Scotia, grew up here in Manitoba, lived out east for a few years. I worked for a startup uh, oil recycling company. And I came back and I said, I want to work in uh, politics. I've always had an interest in it. So on my way home, I stopped in Ottawa. And of course, this is before, there was no pandemic at the time. And this was before some of the, uh, the terrorist threats that they had in Ottawa. So I could actually go right into Parliament Hill and I went to members of parliament and knocked on their doors and said, I'm looking for a job. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it actually worked. Uh, one person happened to be uh, someone who's leaving her office. Uh, and I came by, like leaving their employment. At, so she offered me a job. I mean, of course we had some interview process in that, but that's what got me the job there. And I worked for two other folks after that and then ran for my own seat. So, you know, I, uh, I kind of, uh, created my own niche in politics and uh, has you kind of sometimes in your life you have to uh, have to get a little aggressive and assertive and go out there and make things happen and uh, you know that's the best uh, trip to Ottawa I ever had was you know getting employment that actually led to more than just a job but actually uh, full exposure and eventually ended up getting elected as a elected official myself. Yeah, wow, that's that's quite exciting. I, I I never thought that could that could actually literally just walk to the parliament like 
hello, I need a job. And, um, you know, yeah. and, and you got it, which is, which is really um, interesting and which is also inspiring in, in its, on its own too, because sometimes we think of opportunities and we, we are looking for, oh, um, if I do this now, will they give me a nut? And you just took the steps, like, if we, like they say, if, um, what is the worst that will happen? They will say no, right? Yeah. And why they not? Say no, they say no. And, and you right. tried that, and you might be like, this is a list, right? I feel like just walking down to the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what is it? Uh, Wayne Gretzky, you know, the famous hockey player, said, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the, yeah. And I think that's true. I mean, just go. If someone says no, so what? The next yeah. person might say yes. Wow. Well, yeah, that, this, is, this is great. This is great and uh, fascinating story. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Wow. So the, my next question would be, um, what keeps you um, going? What um, keeps you going? Because these days there are lots of things going on, even mm -hmm. the constant um, back and forth communication with um, yeah. both colleagues and community members, and also the COVID-19 that um, you, have a, you have a particular plan, but it's not working according to that. So it's kind of a little bit frustrating. So what keeps you going just after all the challenges yeah. that comes along the way? Well, you know, it's, uh... COVID-19 is very disruptive, right? Uh, before before COVID-19, you know, one thing I used to really like to do was go to the gym. And I used to, before my little guy was born, I'd be there, you know, get up around five in the morning, go to the gym and then go to work. Uh, of course, COVID-19 now, there's on and off, stop and go. I can't really do that. So I think uh, just, I just think of the long-term thinking, you know what, this isn't forever. Uh, no matter what I'm feeling now, it's going to change probably tomorrow anyways. So just, you know, take it day by day and know that this is not forever. There's uh, some good that's going to come from this pandemic. I mean, a lot of bad happened, but a lot of good will come from it as well. So you just take it day by day and don't uh, try and uh, get too fussy over these things, these inconveniences, because it just is what it is. And, you know, I've got a, a young family and, you know, there's a lot of young families in my community that rely on folks at the legislature. So I, you know, I can't put myself first. I got to put them first. And uh, I can't, uh, you can't lead if you can't control your emotions. So you got to stay calm, stay cool headed and just realize it's coming at you day by day and uh, just be flexible enough to uh, react when you have to and uh, show some uh, initiative. Oh, that's, that's, that's a good. Thanks for sharing that. And, and family, I see that family, this is, Family plays a very key role in our lives, and this is in, at this critical point. Family play more more important role than ever, because now we get to come back. No matter the stress level at work, you come back to the house. At least you have um, a family, you have a baby to to care for, and that that's also very important. And and like you said, um, taking things step by step. Um, you had when you had to react, controlling your emotions, not getting very moved by whatever is happening around because like 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 it's popular, you said you can control you can cannot control what other people say or do to you, right? But you can control how you react um to things. So um that's very good um for um that you shared that with me. Thank you so much. And um the the the, the last question, which I actually I don't have much question, is okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> is um what is your next goal? What is your um? What is what do you aim to do after? Um, what, what's your next goal? My, or vision. My next goal. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. You know, uh, I might have had a different answer if you asked me that nine yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I really have a you know from a, a professional MLA, of course, you know, help not only the province. I mean, we're working as a team on that, but certainly my constituents get through day by day. Uh, I am concerned about small businesses. I know we've announced uh, a number of programs to help. Yeah. Yeah, I understand though that when you're you're closed down, you have no customers, you have no revenue. That I am very worried about some of them. Some of them have become my friends over the years. So uh, I've been in constant contact with them. My focus right now is just to stay on top of that and make sure that I can uh, show the leadership I, that needs to be shown here in this community. And of course, uh, you know, a lot of emotions are high. Uh, some people show more emotion than others on social media, as you've noticed, right? Yeah. And, you know, I, you, I just, uh, I don't get into any arguments or that on social media. I just let people vent. And if they need help, I, I step in to help and do what I can. And, you know, I literally just got home and turned this on to talk to you. So I haven't had any time to myself yet, which is good. 
I, that means I'm doing my job properly. Wow. That's a good idea. Well, thank you for sharing that. And that this, I know before, before for me personally, before 2020, I have like, okay, these are some of the things I want to achieve in 2020. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. But when COVID strike, I'm like, okay. And things like that. <laughs> That's now what? Yeah, so now I'm bas basically being grateful for every day I have opportunity to live. Um, it's like, oh, I'm, I woke up today, thank God, and, and things are going on. So um, for you, you're, you're taking the opportunity even to contact with the business um, business owners to make sure that they are doing very good in this very challenging time, especially for them because now um, it's locked down. Most of the small businesses are closed down. So they really need um, our support at this point in time. That's one of the things that um, you are doing. So great job. Thank you for, for that, um, for taking that initiative and for the, the awesome stuff that you're doing too in the in the parliament. And and one of the things I was I was very I was very fascinated about was that when I saw you, you posted that um, you you guys were in the you were voting to 4 a.m. Um, yep. last week. I was like, man, this is this is incredible. You guys have yeah. families, you have, um, yeah. you have life to live, but even you still stay in the parliament at that time, which you don't have to, you could decide that, oh, I don't want to do it, but, but you're putting in more energy issues, commitment issues, your dedication to make sure that the, the province is moving forward, to make sure that everybody um, is, doing, is doing well, not just um, your own self. So thank you so much for, for that. And also for taking this time out to have a chat with me, um, because um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this interview without you. Uh, so you taking that time, everyone in the short notice, so like, oh, let's do it. So I really appreciate you taking time to to meet with me today. Um, any last thought or comment or anything um, you want people that may get to see the video? Um, any last comment or thought that? Maybe? Yeah, of course. You know, a couple of things. We uh, we just came out of uh, honoring veterans on Remembrance Day, November 11th, right? And you know, my colleague is a veteran himself, John, that you spoke to. And so I know he'd echo my words uh, probably better than I could, but you know, those folks who served in the war went through a lot, right? World War One was a horrible war. World War Two was a horrible war. Uh, what we're going through right now is tough, but compared to what they went through, you know, they survived. I mean, as a society, at least, uh, folks survived that. We got through it. I think we can get through this too. We just had uh, Diwali, which is a big uh, celebration in the Indian community, as you're probably familiar. And Christmas is coming up. So I understand that people are going to want to, you know, some. I hope people were good over the weekend. We'll see in a couple of weeks if uh, <laughs> those numbers will reflect that. But again, going to Christmas, uh, let's, you know, everybody just remember that. Um, this Christmas, you want to have your family over, but you can't obey the health rules so that next Christmas, those same family members will be alive to be able to come to that dinner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we can Zoom, we can do all those things. Please just obey the health orders. There's a lot of people whose lives are at risk. And also, there's a lot of people who just um, are losing their jobs or the businesses because of restrictions. You know, yeah. The more that people disobey, the worse that gets for everyone. So let's remember our friends and family and uh, keep them keep them safe as best we can. Yeah, thank you so much. And well, thank you. Hey, you know what? I figure what we'll do is I'll take a picture here too, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> here, I'll try not to get the cat, my phone in the shot here. There we go. Okay. There we are. So oh. I'll post that on Instagram too, and uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> tag you on that okay all right thank you so much sounds good well chris appreciate the opportunity here and uh you know what uh, stay safe and feel free to reach out if you want to do this again uh, i'll be happy to sure yeah thank you so much andrew yeah i'll definitely reach out to you sooner and then um, okay my, my regards to mr smith and lincoln oh <laughs> thank you i will do will do okay chris thank you so much yeah, okay. Have a great time. Bye -bye. take care my friend bye-bye